came back about six o'clock, fuming. She said it was all my fault. That's what really got me. Oh, I said a lot of things I probably shouldn't have said. Slammed the door and walked out. Yeah. Came down here to drown your sorrows, eh? That's right. Yeah. Well, my round, same again? Thanks. Hey, two pints, please, love. Can I give you a lift back? Well, it's on your way. Yeah, well, I'll drop you down by the roundabout. Is that all right? Yeah, that'd be nice, thanks. Uh, David, you having another one? No, I don't think I will, thanks. Oh, go on, must complete the round. Well, I've got to drive. Well, you're not the only one. Go on, won't make any difference. I always think I drive a lot better after a couple of drinks. I feel more relaxed. Oh, it's all right for you, you're out in the wilds. I'm bound to get stopped. Well, your last chance. All right, then, just one. <laughs> thanks. One more pint, please. <coughs> There you are. One for the road. Cheers. Yeah, you'll be lucky. Okay, we'll see ya. One for the road. But where does that road lead to? Drinking and driving is officially discouraged in many countries. In Britain, if you drive with more than 80 milligrams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood, you're breaking the law. Yet accidents involving alcohol continue, particularly at night. Ask people why they drink and drive and they start to make excuses. I always think I drive a lot better after a couple of drinks. I feel more relaxed. Others claim they drive more carefully if they know they've had a few, assuming the extra caution will keep them out of trouble. To test the accuracy of these views, we went to a deserted airfield. On one of the runways, we set out a test course simulating the sort of hazards found in everyday motoring. A weaving test came first, needing accurate steering and coordination of accelerator, brake and clutch. The course was designed by an acknowledged expert in drinking and driving research, Dr. Andrew Clayton of Birmingham University. Coming out of the weaving test, they then go into a forward garage test. This is what we're doing now. And this is something that most people have to do every evening when they come home and they put the car in the garage. After that, they then reverse the car into another garage. This is obviously more difficult, but again, tests the common skills that are required in driving. In the next test, drivers had to decide if a gap was or wasn't wide enough to drive through. A decision had to be made 25 meters from the gap. Those who considered it was wide enough had to drive through without touching the car bodywork or wing mirrors. An emergency stop was simulated next. The drivers had to drive along this center lane at a steady speed, past all the traffic lights, one of which they were warned would change to red. When it changed, they had to react quickly and take the first available exit, leaving the center lane clear. Thirteen experienced drivers took part in the test each driving round the course seven times. In a moment, you'll see how some of them got on. While driving round, they also had to answer simple general knowledge questions, a test designed to simulate the sort of conversational distractions which occur in normal driving. Which city was ruined by an earthquake in 54 BC? Because the subjects all knew they were under observation, we also enlisted the help of the police to see if our tests accurately reflected normal motoring situations, the sort of situations drivers normally have to face. Police accident reports left no room for doubts. After getting used to the course and the car, our first subject was given her first drink, a mixture of vodka and orange juice. An hour later, after having her blood alcohol level measured, she drove three times round the circuit.
she managed quite well on her early runs. Her first alcohol dose was simply a placebo, orange with a little vodka rubbed round the rim of the glass. What is the capital of the Isle of Man? Though she made some mistakes, she showed she was well in control and after successfully negotiating the gap test, went on to show that when the lights changed to red, she knew exactly what to do. How do you think you did on that run then? Well, I didn't feel as if uh, I was under the influence of very much alcohol. I didn't think um, my perceptual abilities were that inhibited, that limited. Um, I think this is slightly stronger. We'll have to put this one in there before it gets watered down to it. Sorry. <laughs> I don't mind, actually. It can stay out there. <clears throat> An hour later, with a blood alcohol level of 125, 45 milligrams above the legal limit, our first subject drove round the course again. What is the make of car that you are now driving? Ford Escort. Can't remember the rest of it. What is your date of birth? 25th to the 6th of the 55th. What is the name of the Prime Minister? Callaghan. A slurred start, and by the fifth run, a clear difference in performance. How many months of the year begin with the letter A? Two. Oh, Who designed St Paul's Cathedral? <laughs> Who won seven swimming gold medals at the Olympics? David Wilkie. No, I don't know, actually. Just again. Who founded the Scout Movement? Tests completed satisfactorily on earlier runs suddenly seem to be full of problems. A case of alcohol affecting judgment. Can't remember. Who discovered penicillin? An emergency stop. But she forgot to turn off, and when the lights turned to red, simply jammed on the brakes in the middle of the road. A 28-year-old serviceman with an almost identical blood alcohol level to the subject we've just seen. Drove along here last October with three girls in his car. They'd had a few drinks and were going out for a meal. But on this corner, the driver lost control. His car collided with a Volvo estate. It was cut in half by the impact. When you drink, your ability to control a vehicle is immediately affected, even though you may not notice it at the time. But when driving anywhere, it's important to be prepared for the unexpected, to think ahead, and to consider other road users. It's my intention to turn to the right up here, so I'll position myself in pole position, I'll check the mirror, there's nothing at all behind, I'm taking the lower gear for better car control, easing myself forward, pre-setting a traffic code for the benefit of the oncoming vehicles. Easing must be down. Obviously the Mini doesn't want to go around the back of us, so I shall have to move forward, easing up as I go to try and extend my view. Our next subject, a 25-year-old student who'd been driving for six years, put up one of the best performances of anyone taking part in the experiments. At least he did when he was sober. Now, On his early runs, he seemed alert and able to make all the decisions and judgments needed. What is your date of birth? 26th of January, 1953. What is the name of the Prime Minister? Callaghan. Oops. In which month 
is Easter this year. March. After successfully negotiating the first gap, he decided the second was too narrow to attempt. It was the right decision. At night too, he produced a good reaction and stopped quickly in the right place. But how did alcohol affect him? The second drink, though he didn't know it, was considerably stronger than the first. And an hour later, his blood alcohol reading showed 152 milligrams, nearly twice the legal limit. The next run proved quite a contrast. What is the national emblem of Scotland? No idea. How many degrees proof is standard Scotch whiskey? 70. What is the capital of the Isle of Man? No idea. What is four times five? 20. Thinking time also appeared to be affected. It took much longer to decide that a gap wasn't big enough to drive through. In this case, it was the right decision, but the whole course took much longer to negotiate. And when he came to the second gap, he again paused for some time to make up his mind. And when the traffic lights turned red, his instinctive, uncontrolled reaction was to jam on the brakes in the middle of the road. Then he realized his mistake and pulled up to stop in the correct position. A driver with an almost identical blood alcohol level took this road last July. He and his girlfriend had been to a golf club. But when their car reached this bend, the driver lost control. The car bounced off the central reservation and turned over, rolling several times before finally coming to rest on the opposite carriageway. The driver and passenger were both catapulted through the car roof. They landed here. The girl died instantly. The driver died a few hours later. Our next driver, unlike the man driving home from the golf club, was well aware that he'd drunk too much and that he was under observation. His blood alcohol level was 167, more than twice what the law allows, though he didn't know it when he started his test drive. He appeared quite alert and tried hard to do well, but the alcohol in his blood spoiled his efforts. Just as well, no one was following. The alcohol seemed to affect the character of the drivers as well as their performance. When sober, this subject managed to answer most of the questions quickly and correctly. But with alcohol inside him, his response was quite different. If a light bulb lasts four hours and a long light light bulb lasts twice as long, how long do two long life light bulbs last? Eight hours. Maybe, maybe less. Who wrote the 
me. Um, I don't know. Which city was ruined by an earthquake in 54 BC? Rome? I don't know. I'll be good. His decision to bypass the second gap was right, but at the traffic lights, his reaction again reflected his high blood alcohol level. What is the Roman numeral for 10? An emergency stop, but right in the middle of the road. A road rather like this one, along which another motorist traveled just a few weeks ago. There's a 30 mile speed limit, but he drove at 60 and was seen to sway from side to side. In the middle of the village, he and another car collided. After a few drinks, it's easy to think everything is under control. But the control probably isn't as good as you think. Even when you're being particularly careful, there's always the unexpected to contend with. You know you haven't got your lights on. Do they work? Uh, yeah, they do. I, I, they do. Sorry, I, I yeah. forgot. I, didn't, yeah. I thought they were on. Okay. Is it your car? Uh, uh, yes. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I smell drink on your breath. I must ask you to admit to a breath test. Are you willing to do so? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. You are. Sure. We'd like to come to your car, please, and we'll give you the breath test. Yeah. When you drink. Alcohol passes via the throat to the stomach. It's quickly absorbed, and in a few minutes it gets into the bloodstream. The blood distributes it all over the body. The liver has to put up with particularly high concentrations. The effects of the alcohol depend on body size and weight, and on whether you eat anything when you're drinking. It slows down mental activity, acting as an anesthetic, affecting judgment, then speech, memory, vision, and finally, consciousness. Have you ever blown balloons up at a party before? Uh, yeah. Right. You know that bit where you first blow it up, it's quite hard? Uh, yeah. Well, these breathalyzers are like that all the way through. So I must make sure that you take a good deep breath, OK? You must fill this bag in the one go. Do you understand those instructions? Uh, yes, I do. So take a deep breath, keep blowing in this bag till I say stop, OK? <clears throat> Take a deep breath and blow hard. See, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. Okay, we're blowing. Thanks very much. I'll see you later. All the bag does is show us that you've blown into the male piece of bread. That's a positive test. Yeah. I'm now arresting you and taking the Great Falls Police Station. We're not a last saying because we're supposed to do so, but whatever you say can be written down and maybe used for evidence. Does anyone want to say about it? No. No. Well, I'd like to get in the car, please. Sit in the back. OK? Our next test subject told us he drinks around 10 to 15 pints a week. As he walked out to drive, we asked him how much he thought he'd had on this occasion. Um, quite a bit, I think. Roughly how many pints? Um, six or seven. How does that compare with your normal habits? How much are you used to drinking? Well, um, I haven't felt like this for uh, quite a time, I think. But you have driven back feeling like this before, have you? No, never. I don't think I attempt to drive like this, usually. I think I can drive all right, though. Yeah. OK, well, we'll soon see. Thank you very much. Right. In fact, he'd drunk less than he imagined, but with a blood alcohol level of 91 milligrams, he was over the legal limit. 
the alcohol appeared to confuse his driving and his answers. What is the name of the Prime Minister? Ian Callaghan. What do the initials HGV stand for? Very good vehicle. Extreme left hand pedal by your feet operate. Accelerator. He got through the first gap all right, but after slowing down to think about it, decided to miss out the second. It was the right decision. On the next run, he managed to negotiate most of the course successfully but the alcohol seemed to make him less careful. When sober, he carefully considered each gap and each decision. Alcohol affected his thinking and judgment. If a light bulb lasts four hours, how long do two long-life light bulbs last? 16 hours. What telephone number do you dial to get the operator? It also affected his concentration. And when the row of traffic lights came into view for the last time, though one clearly changed to red, he failed to notice it. On a normal road, a mistake like this could prove fatal. But how did the driver think he'd done on the run? Just as well as any other lot. Good. You don't think the alcohol affected you at all? Um... Not really. Well, I suppose it did in a way, but I didn't notice it. A motorcyclist who travelled along this road last June also failed to notice the after-effects of drinking. He sped towards a humpback bridge, unaware that someone had parked a car just the other side. The bike hit the car. The rider was thrown in front of an oncoming car. At the post-mortem, a blood alcohol analysis showed a reading of 55 milligrams, the same as our last test subject. How are you feeling now, Alan? I'm fine. Uh, how much do you reckon you've had to drink? Uh, not very much at all, a couple of pints, I think. Uh, so you feel quite confident to drive? Yeah. So if you're well, coming... I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd drive if I was at home, if I'd told I'd been drinking. But um, I think I would drive. It's difficult to put. Psychologically, I wouldn't drive, but physically, but I would. If you just stepped out of a pub there instead of a caravan, would you drive? If I had a car here, yeah. Fine. OK, let's pop in and see how you go. Alcohol affects different people in different ways. After drinking relatively little, and while still below the legal limit, this subject made a number of serious errors. Mistakes which, on a public road, could have caused a serious accident. Even a small amount of alcohol made his whole approach more aggressive. Who organised the recent World Series of cricket matches in Australia? The next run proved just as troublesome, with the driver driving faster than he did when he was sober. In which month is Easter this year? March.
Spectacular finish to a round in which there'd been quite a number of errors. But what did the driver think of his performance? How would you compare that run with your first run before? Um, my first run before wasn't too good because of the bad driving, which I wasn't too bothered because I hit the bollards, because there are only bollards and not a garage wall. But um, I would say it was slightly worse, perhaps affected by alcohol. Uh, if you'd driven home after coming out of that pub instead of coming out of the garage there, you would have hit quite a number of cars and you would have scraped the side of the car in the garage. Does that worry you at all? Um, if, if I'd been coming in from the pub, I wouldn't have been going as fast backwards into a garage and if I'd hit something, I wouldn't have carried on going backwards. I'd have stopped straight away, so I wouldn't have done as much damage. Um, I wouldn't have had a car with such stiff, stiff steering if I'd been driving, probably. And um, I don't think I'd done, done that much damage if I'd come home from the pub. I've driven with a lot more alcohol in my blood than this. What, what can you remember that? I mean, did you ha have you ever had an accident doing that? No, I've never had an accident. I don't have an accident in the car. I've fallen off plenty of motorbikes with, because, because of being drunk, and I wouldn't ride a motorbike having touched any alcohol at all. But I'd drive a car with more alcohol in my blood than this. Yeah. Why? Because you feel safer in a car? Um, yeah, much safer than on a yeah. motorbike. Yeah. Then cars are as safe as the people who drive them. Alcohol can so easily give you a false sense of security. Oh, are you going to Arthur's party? That's what happens tonight. Uh, it'll work out. Usually does. Oh, I don't know. She's not normally like that. Oh, I shouldn't have lost my temper. Yeah. We're going a bit fast, aren't we? It's all right, there's no one about. The accident was discovered the following morning. I always think I'd drive a lot better after a couple of drinks. I feel more relaxed. Like all the accidents you've seen, here we simply reconstructed what actually happened. And it could happen again, if you drink and drive.